Let's have a look at some of the things you might want to think about in order to improve your performance on your outcomes from this year. Now, the first thing to do is just consider whether your outcomes are in line with the expectations that you had. And actually, at such a time of reform and so many changes going on, if the results you got were pretty much in line with your expectations, then that's not a bad place to start. Now, beyond that, it's worth asking yourself some questions about things other than the qualifications that might have changed. So for example, has the cohort that you're entering for a particular qualification changed? Have you got a slightly more or less able cohort this year, for example? Have you made changes to the way you're entering students for qualifications? So for example, are you entering them for a different mix of subjects, for different tiers, or at a different point during their school career? And what's happened within your school as well in terms of things like staff turnover? If you've seen a big change in your staffing within a particular subject year on year, then that might be a factor in explaining some unexpected outcomes or unexpected results that you had. But once you've worked through those things, there are definitely some other things that you can look at in terms of uh, figuring out where are the areas where you're going to be best off focusing your attention in order to improve your performance. So one thing to look at across maths, sciences and languages is tiering. We've seen new 9 to 1 qualifications in those subjects with tiers in a different place to previously. And if you haven't quite got the results you wanted, it's definitely worth looking at whether you've entered the right students for the right tiers. And if you want to know more about how tiering works on the new qualifications and some guidance as to how to choose which tier to enter for, then you can click to watch a video on tiering. You should definitely take advantage of our enhanced results analysis tool, ERA. It's a hugely powerful, valuable and free tool that provides you with student and question level data across every student and every paper that they've sat with AQA. You can look at each student's performance on each question, including on some non-exam assessment. You can look at performance by assessment objective to see strengths and weaknesses across different skills and question types. And you can compare your students to both national averages and similar schools. One thing you can think about is requesting scripts of students who did particularly well in tricky areas. So if you use ERA to identify students who performed particularly well on particularly challenging questions, you could always consider requesting those scripts so you can see exactly what they did and think about how you want to incorporate that into your teaching. More broadly, it's really worth thinking about how your teaching and learning has adapted to the new specifications. The new qualifications are significantly different to the legacy ones, both in terms of content and assessment. So actually your teaching and learning probably needs to have changed quite significantly in order to make sure that you're maximizing your performance on those qualifications. Now, one particular thing to understand is the extent to which the assessment on reformed GCSEs and A-levels is based around skills and not knowledge recall. So while there is a lot more knowledge content in the new specifications that needs to be learned, the assessments themselves actually generally don't focus on knowledge on its own. And in actual fact, we have imposed by Ofqual a limit in most subjects on the amount of knowledge recall that we're allowed to test in isolation. So in most subjects, although the amount varies, it's generally around 15%. So that means that actually only 15% of the marks on a GCSE are available for straight recall of facts off the specification. The other 85% of the marks are going to be for students using that knowledge in some way. So either using knowledge along with some understanding, applying it in context, or using it to support an argument. Now, it's really hard to overstate the importance of this, and where schools haven't done as well perhaps as they'd expected, this is often the reason. It's something we can see coming down the track. So, for example, in science, our Year 10 tests last year showed that students really struggled with taking their knowledge and applying it in an unfamiliar context, and that was borne out by their performance on the first GCSE papers this summer. So schools that really understand how to develop that skill set and get students comfortable with using their knowledge in unfamiliar settings are likely to perform well. In order to make sure you understand this really well, I would suggest getting familiar with the assessment objectives in the qualification. These define everything about how the assessments work, and you'll really want to look in detail at how those assessment objectives are reflected both in the questions and the mark schemes to get a full understanding of what it is that students need to show they're able to do on their papers in order to achieve the top marks.